Joe Biden signed the nearly $2 trillion COVID relief package this week, and it gives many Americans $1,400 checks and billions to pet projects for Democrat-run cities and states. In fact, only 9% of the total amount has anything to do with COVID. And while Democrats are throwing money around like someone who just won a lottery, illegal immigrants are pouring in from the southern border. That is a crisis worsening by the day. Senator John Bozeman is the senior senator from my home state of Arkansas. And full disclosure, he's been a longtime personal friend. My daughter was his campaign manager when he defeated an incumbent senator 12 years ago. Prior to that, he served as congressman for the 3rd District of Arkansas, and he's just announced his re-election campaign. Senator John Bozeman is our honored guest. Senator, thank you so much for coming, and uh, it is good to see you. I want to get right underway with talking about uh, the Thursday night speech by President Biden. He didn't seem to uh, think very much of what Donald Trump had done to prepare for the vaccine, never gave him any credit. Was that disappointing to you in the light of his saying he wants unity? Uh, this bill was such that it was, uh, as you pointed out, $2 trillion. No Republican had any input at all. And that's why we're in the situation that we're in now, where the talk at the coffee shop is, how could every Democrat senator vote for uh, illegal immigrants to get checks? How could every Democrat senator vote uh, such that felons, people in jail, are getting checks? In regard to the speech, I was so disappointed. On election day, uh, a million people were vaccinated. Uh, prior to that, when the president announced it last May that he was going to warp speed things and we would have a vaccine by the end of the year, everybody laughed at him. So again, we've done so many great things. And the economy now, uh, President Biden signed one bill into law, the economy now is, is starting to rock along the resilience that we have now is a direct result of President Trump and Congress working together uh, to put us in this situation. You know, we talked about the fact that only 9% of this huge porkless bill ended up going to have anything to do with COVID, but that was the rationale upon which it was sold, that it's going to help us fight COVID. When I look at some of the provisions that farmers are going to be repaid, not 100% of the loans they have out, 120%, but only if they are either African-American or Hispanic or Asian. If they're white farmers, tough luck to them. John, that seems like true racism in the sense that people are excluded simply because of the race that they had nothing to do with. Well, it's, it's everyone, Mike. You mentioned a few categories, but it's Islanders, it's American Indians. It, it truly is everybody but white men and white women. And 120% of loan forgiveness, there's no, there's no cap on the amount of loan. There's no uh, looking at your financial, uh, you know, where you're at in regard to your success. Uh, you, it's so crazy, Mike. You could, you could be in a situation where you could have a loan that you got on December 28th. On having that loan on January 1st, it would be completely forgiven. If you just paid off your loan on December 20th, you get absolutely nothing. Mm. And so it's it's not fair to the groups that it's even trying to help. It's so poorly written. And uh, it, it's not only does it not only it, it pays them or their bank. So some of them will get it directly and then they'll have the opportunity to decide if they want to pay their loan or not at that time. I, it, it's unbelievable. It, it is unbelievable, and I don't think a lot of Americans understood that that was one of the provisions in the $1.9 trillion. Uh, Senator, let's talk about the southern border. We have now thousands upon thousands of people pouring in the border, some of them <laughs> brazenly wearing T-shirts that say, Biden, you invited me in. I, I mean, the Biden administration has yet to call this a crisis. They just say it's a challenge. Would you deem it a crisis with that many people coming across the border, some of whom, by the way, have been tested positive for COVID but are still being let in? No, Mike, it's, it's definitely a, a crisis. I had the opportunity to be the um, chairman of the Homeland Security Appropriations Subcommittee, the group that actually funds ICE and the Border Patrol. I've been on the border extensively and toured it. Uh, we've got so many great men and women down there working their hearts out to do their very best. 
And then all of a sudden, the Biden administration comes in. Uh, they change the policy such that, that you're free to flow across the border. Uh, this is inviting people, 100,000 last month. And those were the people that, that actually were apprehended and then, you know, the paperwork beginning. They say 39,000, but I suspect much higher than that actually were able to creep across the, the border unnoticed. So it is a true crisis. Many of these are, are uh, young people. Uh, they will literally put a note on them with an address of mm -hmm. a relative or, or friend someplace in the United States and drop them off. Let's look ahead briefly to the 2022 elections. You're up for re-election. Uh, I don't think most people think it'll be uh, an overwhelmingly challenging race. You, you have such popularity within the state, and deservedly so. Uh, but across the board, do Republicans have a good chance of taking both the House and Senate because of the fact that Democrats have just overplayed their hand? No, I think, Mike, I think we've got an excellent chance that... The the country is center, I think, you know, maybe a little bit center right, certainly center. The policies that we're coming out, seeing coming out of Washington now are as far left as they're unimaginable for most Americans. As we've been talking about some of the things that have recently been passed, when you look at the last election and you see that, that we really had a great night except for the presidency. And so... Uh, Picking up seats in the House that nobody expected us to, I think, poised to, you know, to turn the corner in the next election cycle there. The Senate uh, did a great job of maintaining. We had problems in Georgia. I think that was a fluke. And so we got an excellent chance, I think, of, of roaring back and taking over and really then having the ability to put the Biden administration, put President Biden, not so much him, but his advisors that are as far left as they can be, that are out of touch with the American public, put a check on that. And uh, we are in the process now of recruiting some great candidates throughout the country. And uh, I, I think we're going to be in, in good shape um, with the help of the American public. Well, everyone who knows you speaks of you as one of the nicest, most uh, cooperative guys in the U.S. Senate. Senator John Bozeman, I want to say thanks for your time tonight. Our audience can follow Senator Bozeman on Twitter, at John Bozeman. Also, go to bozemanforarkansas.com. Learn more about the senator and his reelection campaign.